Hello everyone, welcome to Jazz Siri, where we talk about life experiences from our own personal realities. I am Oli Chienobong, and I'm not alone in the studio. I have two intelligent and witty ladies. Now let's just say I were to be an edible vegetable. I think I would want to be what the Igbos call Onubu, that is the bitter leaf. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know how she comes up with these things. Bitter leaf of all things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Sheila OJ and if I was to be a vegetable, I would be a cauliflower because I look good and I taste good. Mm. Ah, yes. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Jassiri. My name is Eniola Alawiye and I'm mostly known as Eniwine. So if I were to be a vegetable, a sun choke. You want to know why? 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 I want to choke you people. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the show, guys. <laughs> All right, so today we'll be talking about um, living as a young widow. Now, our guest is a young lady who lost her husband under tragic circumstance. She's right here with us where she's ready to share her story. Now, it's been two years since the very sad incident happened on that fateful day, but she's coming out now telling people as it is. I know for a lot of us, we've lost one or two people, mm -hmm. family members or close friends, but it's it never has really been the same. Can, can right. you just, anyway, how has it been for you? So I lost my dad a couple of, almost a couple of years ago. And I think for the longest of time, I was in denial and time ills basically, as time goes on, it becomes more bearable. Right. Um, for me, I lost a favorite uncle a few years ago. And um, just like she said, time heals, but it's it's really more of the memories, like through his through the memories or through my memories of him, I feel like you know he's still with us one way or the other. All right, now you've just heard it from all of us, our personal experience. When we go on break, we'll be back with our guest. Stay with us. Welcome back to Jess Siri. Now, today's topic is all about life as a young widow. Our guest, John Steven, is a professional singer, a voiceover artist, and a writer. Now, in 2020, Joan lost her husband, Patrick, in a way no one should lose a loved one. Now, she's sharing her experience as a young widow to inspire others and change the narrative about widowhood. Welcome, Joan. Welcome Thank to the you. show. Thank now, you for having me. Can you take us back to that very fateful day? That's July the 10th, 2020. Okay, so it was a normal day. It was a Friday. Um, he said he was going out. And I said, don't go out today. Just stay home. Let's just spend time together. I even ordered small chops that he had been lost in after. So um, he insisted that he, he needed to go out. You know, he needed to see someone. So he went out that day. And at about 3 p.m., my neighbor came and knocked on the door. And I was so, I remember I was so excited to see her. And I, because she never comes around. So she said, don't panic. Your husband is at the hospital. Doran Hospital is just next to our house. And she said, you are needed there that he was in an accident. So um, I just picked up the kids, because it was just I and the kids at home. Just picked up both of them and went to the hospital. Got into the hospital, it was empty. Like there was nothing going on. I'm wondering what's happening here. And then I called the nurse who called me, or who called my neighbor, and she said, come outside, madam, come outside. So I went outside, and that was when I saw him. He was in a kekena pep. I remember he had a bandage around his head. There was blood everywhere. He, he, he had blood coming out of his nose, his head, and um, his head was like twice the size. He looked brain damaged. You know how someone who is brain damaged look, that was how he looked. So that was how that day. Was he still alive as at the time? Yes, he was. He was alive. I, f I found out that he had been alive for about two hours before he died there. And um, they, put a, they put an IV on him inside the keke. So they yeah. didn't take him into the hospital? No, no, no. They said they, they, said they didn't have blood. <laughs> they said they didn't have blood and that they were moving them to Marina. I saw the other people that were shot. One guy on his hand, some other dude on the leg, you know. But Patrick's was it was a was a it was a bullet to the head. Yeah. So um, apparently you were pregnant when he passed on. Yeah, yeah I, I found, found out two days after, after he passed. So he didn't even know. No, 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 he didn't know. When you found out, what went through your mind? What did you think you were going to do? Well, um, 
Okay, at first I was numb. Okay, I'm pregnant. Then I was angry, shocked. I asked why. You know, because the reason why they took me to the hospital in the first place was because my BP was rising. So they needed to stabilize it. And the doctor wanted to re recommend some routine drugs that you, you usually give a, you when you have a high blood pressure. So he said, when was your last period? I don't know what he saw. I just mumbled an answer and he said, okay, I insist on doing a blood test. They did a blood test. And I remember he had folded, he had folded the, the, um, the results. So when he came in with the paper folded, I'm like, what's wrong with this guy? And he opened it and he said, Madam, it's positive. And I'm like, no, it can't be. You know, so there were, there were so many things that were going through my mind. I was numb. I was, I was, I was not excited. Usually when you find out you're pregnant, they're like, oh, baby. You know, but it was, there was no excitement. It was just, I just had too many, so many questions, you know, at that time. You know, pregnancy is a very interesting journey because even on its own, right it's it's, it's it, it takes a lot on mm -hmm. your mental health and all anyone. that how were you able to cope like what kind of support system did you have especially like going through losing your husband and then having to be pregnant yeah. without having him around you well I, I have four sisters mm. um, they are very supportive um, one is married but the three that are still single they moved into our home because they didn't want me to be alone with the children. And I remember that there was a day I went for my antenatal, like usual. Mm -hmm. And um, I was crossing the road. And I remember something just telling me, why not just, there's a car coming. Mm -hmm. You just, just walk into the road and join your husband. I mean, mm -hmm. you, would, you would end this pain. And I remember I caught myself just before I could, you know, I actually changed yeah. my hospital because of that. Yes, wow. I changed my hospital. Um, my sisters were very supportive. The first and second trimesters were a blur. I, I, I didn't feel pregnant. Hmm. I would go to the hospital and ask them to check if the baby was still alive. I was barely taking my prenatals. I had to be reminded. I wasn't eating, so they hmm. had to um, recommend very... Um, nutritious prenatals for me just so that the baby would be healthy so yeah. ha having gone through what what you went through as at that time it's understandable for you not to see a reason to leave i mean you lost a life and at the same time you had another life growing on the inside of you now you have the girl and she's nine months old such a beautiful girl that you have how have you been able to keep the memory of your late husband patrick how have you been able to answer the so many questions little children would always want to keep pushing at you you know for every time they see his picture every time they see the wedding picture they see the frame they see his clothing they see something that reminds him how have you been able to cope with all of that at first when they would ask questions i would just be speechless i would just be speechless because it w i was new at this i didn't know what to say to them but as time goes by um we were married for six years before he died so we have a lot of memories we, we made a lot of memories so i would we would talk about him we would get his pictures out and they all look like him so it's like i'm staring at him every day <laughs> my son does some things and i'm like oh Oh my gosh, that, that, you, just, you look like your dad so much just doing that. So um, there are questions, I answer their questions. The ones I can't answer, I just um, try to change the topic. To be honest, I try to change the topic because there are some things I don't have answers to. Like sometimes my son, when, when, when my, my daughter says, is daddy ever coming back? Mm -hmm. And I have to tell her, no, he's never coming back, he's in heaven. And she says, why? I've, 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 we've talked about it so many times. Sometimes it gets tiring, but as much as possible. There are some questions I don't have answers to. I don't pretend to have answers, so. Wow, so it's been so heavy, like ser seriously. Um, I can see Annie trying to fight off the tears <laughs> as well. Uh, but we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk to Joan about her experience since her husband passed and also living the single life again and the possibility of remarrying.
new Central TV, Africa's number one storyteller, has come with the best of both worlds. With a combination of news app and live TV, we ensure that you keep track of the latest headlines, breaking news, and in-depth analysis from professional journalists from around the continent. Download the new Central TV app on Android and iOS and get started today. Don't forget to follow us on New Central's social media platforms. New Central, Africa first. And you are welcome back to Just Siri. Our guest today is John Stephen, a young mother of three who became a widow when she least expected. It's been a couple of years, right? And you know, a lot has happened. You've had a baby. How was life, the whole of life, your children, work, living, existing? How has it been in the past one year? Um, it's hard. That's the first thing. It's very hard. Um, raising children with two people is hard enough. And then when you have to do it by yourself. I mean, there are some days I'm thinking, am I a good mom? You know, when my kids do something and I react, I mean, there's a way a man would react and there's a way a woman would react. And some fathers are usually on the soft side. They're not the, they're not the, the mothers are the disciplinarians usually. And so we had that dynamic. We had that balance between us with me and Patrick. But now it's just me. And I'm like, oh, should I have screamed at him that way? Should I have done that? So it's, it, it, it has its, um, I have good days, but then I have bad days, but it's hard. That's just mostly mostly hard hmm. all right john now i know a lot of people mean you well especially with what has happened in the past two years so a lot of them will come with different kinds of advice this one say do this do that some have not gone so well they've not gone down so well with you can you share some of this misplaced advice you've gotten in recent times okay um one what one said um don't dress too nice so that your helpers won't think you've arrived oh what? Yes. <laughs> People expect widows to minimize their happiness. Mm. Even if you are happy, don't You're show, it. To show it. Yes. To People should Yes, people should see that you are grieving, that you are sad. I mean, even at my husband's burial, I didn't wear black. I wore a gray dress. Because if anybody knew Patrick, he was so full of life. You would never catch him without a smile on his face. That's not who he was. And even though it's sad that he's gone, I would not be perpetually grieving, and I don't think that should be the um, that should be the narrative here. We should not perpetually grieve. Death is painful, but then life goes on. You have to live, especially if you have children, and even for yourself, you have to live for yourself. You have to be happy. Wow, like uh, that. I don't know. People are quite interesting with their yeah. choice of advice. Yeah, or yeah. the one that <laughs> told me if if I was interested in dating her seventy-year-old uncle. Huh? Who so is also a widower? We're pause. We're going. We're getting there. Now. <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, because so my my thing is my question really for you is, recently you've started sharing videos on social media. You know, opening up about experiences. Talked about you know dealing with sexual urges, um, and you know overall experience. Now, what is the quote unquote single life like for you now? I mean, you were just talking about someone saying a 70-year-old. Like, what, what is it like now? Okay, I remember when Patrick was still alive and I read some things online about what people go through in their marriages. And I used to think, oof, thank God I'm married because the dating scene right now seems so porous. Bloody. People bloody. are, people are, people are, are going bloody. through it, <laughs> trying to date. So now, I mean, right now, I'm just, I'm just observing, mm. basically, you know. But... You definitely have people who will suggest to you, oh, you know, there's this guy, he's also a widower. There's this dude that is a single father. There's this, you know, people always come with their suggestions. I know that they mean well, but a lot of it is misplaced. Like asking me to date a 70-year-old man, come on. You know, wow. he can't, I don't, I my don't dad is 70. Yeah. How can he <laughs> ask me to? I was so upset, you know. How do you set boundaries? I mean, people will come, even your loved ones. Like mm -hmm. you said, they mean well. I mean, they're just trying to see, oh, how can we make her feel better? How can we? But for your own sanity, 
you need you don't need all these things you, as most of them you don't need them so how do you really set these boundaries you know try to shut people up this is new to me so i'm still learning how to set boundaries i'm still learning how to set boundaries um usually i just go with no the answer is no and i don't want no. to no. i yeah, that's 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 that, that's just i just say no and and you know you're you're a beautiful lady you've always thank been you. very beautiful lady. I, I mean the marriage the marriage you. blossomed and brought out a better version of you yes, i mean because we've known you for quite a while now so so really we're all humans we're natural i mean even the single ladies they still commit fornication <laughs> how much more people that are legal you know but right now you're no more with a partner i mean your partner has gone um to a better place quote unquote how have you been able to warm your bed up at night? How, what, what advice have you been getting from that angle? Is it the time of day for that question? Just, I think so. Uh, okay, <laughs> just, just wondering. Really? Um, well, um, some people have suggested that I get toys. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. to right. help me in that. Did they send you pictures as well? <laughs> well no, shared pages, like Instagram pages of right. toys oh, okay. where I can get, you know, Someone even knows someone who sells, so you know. Adult toys. Yes, adult toys, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And I, my first question is, I didn't even ask you, why are you suggesting this to me? But, I mean, I don't even, I, I, I just tell them, I'm not about to go down that road, so no. Okay, so how do I cope? I work out a lot. So, <laughs> it's like a lot. So that yeah. emphasis that's on a lot. That urge? Yeah, it helps, for really? real. By the time I'm done, I am tired and... Sometimes I take a cold shower, a very icy cold shower. So especially now that there's Hamatan, that works. <laughs> By the time I'm shivering and I just, you know, want to go to bed. But then there's the memories. Then I don't watch movies. I don't watch romance. Anybody that's kissing anybody, mm. put that aside. And, and of course, I create healthy boundaries. Like if a guy is trying to be close to me, I just close that. I'm like, no, you know. Mm. I'm not, I'm not going with anybody to see movies or, you know, especially if I look at the guy and I think there's no future here, mm. you know. So I'm not in that space where I'm ready for anybody to waste my time or waste anybody's time. So, so yeah. sorry to cut you short, but if you get probably, you meet someone who you think, oh, well, something might happen, this, well, there are chances, possibilities. Are you ready to explore? To, to explore? Right, like, are you ready to go down that route now? Um, down that route. Mm. Do you mean dating to possibility of something bigger? I guess. Marriage. I guess the question, the first question for me would be: Are you even open to remarrying? Because of course, I'm open to remarrying. My children are under six. Ah, yeah. Okay. All three of them. All, All three, three of them. them. You know, yeah. Dara is nine months. Jubilee is three years old. Mar um, um, Micah is five. Oh, wow. And Micah even he asks me, "When is your next wedding?" Wow. Oh, these yes. children. Yeah, if you watch my story. How did he know to ask such yeah, questions? He, 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 he says, I need somebody else to be my daddy. Mm. I'm, I've spoken to some widows, and their children are not open to them remarrying, but not my kids. They want a daddy, you know. So, so I guess following that and going back to Emmy's question, yeah. since you're yeah. open, so would yeah, you yeah, be open I, to yeah, dating I'm, yeah, now, I'm, I'm or do you not think you're still... Dating, maybe not, but oh, okay. yeah, but in the long run, yes. Mm. I, I would like to remarry. But so. not right now. You're not ready to date. You're not in that space yet. No, no. I mean, dating means, I mean, experimenting with a lot of people. I'm not in that headspace. No, I just want to meet the right person and get married. Just do it old school. <laughs> do it old school. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, you've, you've gone through this. I mean, this happened in 2020. Yeah. And we've gone one year, we've gone two years, we've gone a couple of years after that particular year, that fateful incident that happened on the 10th of July. Um, there are a lot of people out there who have not gotten, who may have gone through what you've gone through, that's in terms of losing their spouse, and they don't even know where to pick themselves up and go. I mean, you found your own place where you need to pick yourself because you still coming out on social media. You've been talking about generator, how you're doing certain things, you know, by yourself, some DIYs you've learned. Yeah. What can you say to that young widow or the widow out there who is trying to still pick their broken pieces of life together? Okay, um, not everyone is religious, mm -hmm. but... For me, I can't put God aside because, to be honest with you, I have absolutely no strength of my own. So any strength I have, any courage I have, first of all, comes from the word of God. I mean, there's a scripture I read usually 
when I'm sad. And it says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, mm. but the Lord brings them through it all. That means in this world, there will be problems. There's yeah. no going to be a smooth sailing for anyone. Mm -hmm. You know, be, 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 a, be realistic. Mm -hmm. And then having a good support system. It could be family. It could be friends. You know, it could be, you know, uh, a, a book club that you go to. It's very, very, very important. And then, then look for something you like doing. I like working out. I like music. I like watching K-drama. <laughs> so, you know, just do what makes you happy. Do what makes you happy. Beautiful. Uh, well, one more thing, because I noticed, I mean, I've been following you a lot on social media, and I remember there was a time you needed to change certain things that reminded you of your um, your spouse. But there's still some other things in there, because you had to change your bed. You said you couldn't sleep in that same bed anymore, because mm -hmm. it reminded you so much of, um, of your late husband. How have you been able to tone down those other memories, you know? Because, I mean, you look at the chair, you remember certain fights or quarrels or memories you've had around that space. You're still living in that same house. How have you been able to cope? Well, if you know Patrick, you know that he couldn't sit in one place. So everywhere I look in the house, I see him there. And I, I try to move out of that house, you know, but the rent in Lagos is not smiling at anybody. Mm -hmm. So I was forced to stay back. I changed uh, the furniture, the paintings on the wall, the, the, the bed in our bedroom. But there are still things that I can never change, like the children that look just like him, all three of them, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I just try to cherish the memories. And it's, it's not a bad thing to have memories. They were good memories. I mean, it's not going to be easy. There are days when I wake up and there are tears in my eyes, like I've had a dream about him and I wake up with tears in my eyes, you know. You just, you just move on, I guess. You just yeah. try. I mean, people say there's no, there's no such thing as moving on. And I think that's true for some people, but you can move forward. Right. Right. Maybe you will not move on, but you must move, move forward. forward. Yeah. This is this is such a this is such an emotional time um, we've had with you, and we really appreciate the fact that you're coming out to share your personal stories. A lot of people have not gotten over this, and they cannot come out to say it as it is. But thank you so much for joining us. In thank Jazz you for having me. Thank you. All right, you're still watching Jazz Theory. Up next, we have Eye Candy with our guests. And you are welcome back. Ladies, I have something for you. Do you know? Mm. Can, can you guess? Eye candy? Absolutely. High five, girl. Can you pass it? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so um, what we have once enjoyed, now let me take that again. What we have once enjoyed, we can never lose. All that we love deeply becomes a part of us. That is a quote by Ellen Keller. Mm. So how does that resonate with you? Mm. It's like John, John, do you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that, it makes so much sense. It makes so much sense. Um, people say that when someone dies, they are not completely gone hmm. because their memories are alive. Um, those things that you've experienced with them will never change. You, ca you can't even go back in time to alter it. Right. So, I mean, it's a part of you, good or bad, it's a part of you. So, yeah, that really, really resonates with me. What we've once enjoyed, we can never lose. Um, for me, it means even even when we lose somebody, even though heaven has gained the angel, the angel is still with me. The angel still moves around with me. The memories I have that I carry with me, and sometimes certain decisions I take. I mean, when I think or when I dream about it, and the person comes, 
comes into that dream and sometimes they're like a guide a guardian this guardian angel that we really never have when we're so troubled in our spirits sometimes we dream and the person is there like a comforter some comforting us and probably advising us on what to do and how to go about it the only person i know i've lost that is quite dear to me was my mom's sister who died of breast cancer and she was there for my wedding and she died in pain she was begging for death so it it, it was it was heartbreaking seeing her, but I know she had to go at that time because that was the best time for her to leave. Um, you know, for me, the this quote runs deep, you know, from having a loved one, but also I can think of like, like a habit, right? So if you've loved dancing, no matter how old you get, you will always love dancing. And that's really what, what it is about this this quote for me. It's it's basically what you have once enjoyed, we can never lose. And what we love deeply becomes a part of us. There are a lot of things about us that when someone sees you, they will say, oh, you've always been that way, mm -hmm. right? So I have, a, I have a random example of, I've always loved big faced watches, right? Even before it became a thing, I love big face watches. And then someone who hasn't seen me in like almost 10 years saw me. And the first thing he said is, you still wear big face watches. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really, that's really what, what this quote means. But there are just certain things about us that makes us us. And obviously, um, going back to the topic that we have today, it's along the line, there are people that we meet that become a part of us. Mm -hmm. And that no matter what, whether they're still with us or whether they're gone, they're always there and they will always be there. Yeah. Right. So I think personally for me, it has to, it goes beyond people. You know, things we're used to. Not everything, nothing is permanent, right? But what can be permanent is what we make out of it. Now, talk about expired friendships. Right, you have friends, you grew up together, you were in school together, you know, you worked together. That relationship that relationship might necessarily not last forever. But the memories you make out of it, you know, would stay with you forever. You probably a marriage, it might not even be death, divorce, you know. The things you did together would live with you. The person might necessarily not be there, but the thing you made out of it. So I think it, for me, it's just to be very conscious of the moment. What, when, you're, when you're doing something, when you're involved in something, what are you making out of it? When that thing is not there anymore, what would you have to hold on to? Hmm. Honestly, this has been a very emotional, just series yeah. episode. And yeah, I just very. really want to thank you, John. Um, yeah, thank you, guys. Thank and, you so much. For and coming. I really love that, you know, even with all that you've, you've gone through, you're still drop dead gorgeous mm -hmm. it's like for me. Can forget I that's oh, i mean yes, i mean fire. forget forget all those people that are saying that you have to look you know but you you you're looking good and you're you. you're taking care of your children and the memory of your husband is is still very much fresh obviously and still very much with the kids because they look like him oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i mean she's a classical example of we don't look like what we've been through exactly oh, she doesn't look exactly like what she's and, been and, and, and 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 we're really grateful um but i would say one of one of my takeaways um from this from our conversation today is sometimes we we you might not move on but you have to move forward that's my that, takeaway too sorry. really <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you have to move on but you have to move forward right. that that really spoke deep for me so you just have to move forward mm. yeah. another thing is you own your life story mm. you hold the pen don't let people write it for you mm. people are out there she looks good for somebody who went through such. A widow, I know, right? Do you get, you know, she looks like she's moving on oh, that quickly. It's none of their business. Mm. Do you, you know, you know what you're going through. You know what it takes to be able to handle things the way you are handling it. And I'm so proud of you. You are really inspiring. And the fact that what you're doing on social media now is such a great way to preserve your husband, your late husband's memory. Mm -hmm. Well Thank done. You. Thank well you so done. much. Thank you so much for talking, <laughs> guys. Yeah, we know that his legacy will still live on. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it will have, it has not lived him with you ensuring that the kids live by his attributes and by his morals. So thank you for inspiring a lot of young widows, young women, young widowers, people who have been through similar situations as yourself. 
you may not know this, but you are an inspiration to a lot of them, even Absolutely. on social media. Mm -hmm. Thank you so I much. I mean, it's, 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 it's not been easy, but you have put up a very good front mm -hmm. and you have been a very good soldier. And we hope that you will have the grace to the very end. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, at this point, it has been, just as Sheila said, it has been an emotional one. I have mm -hmm. goosebumps. But let's also ensure that every moment you spend with your loved one is really worth it yeah. because you never can tell how, just how many more minutes the person has to live in this world we call Earth. At, on this note, we need to say, as always, you need to be bold, be, bold, be strong, and be a Jassiri woman. woman.